So far we have seen how the box model works with HTML and CSS. Now in this section, I am discussing a very simple yet important concept called block versus inline elements. Sometimes in the interviews, instead of asking block versus inline, one may ask the difference between div and a span tag. So let's have a look at it. Here I have this code where I have the h1, paragraph and anchor. Now let me directly tell you that h1 is the block element, paragraph is the block element and anchor tag is inline. What is the difference that I will show you with the output as well. Right now this is what the output is. We have h1, the paragraph and the anchor tag. Let me also open the developer tool to understand it clearly. If I click on the element selector and roll over the mouse on h1, you see that the entire h1 is highlighted. The width of the h1 is the browser window size. In case of paragraph, again it is the entire width of the page. But if I roll over the mouse on the anchor, you see that only the content is highlighted. So by rolling the mouse, when the element selector is clicked, you can make out which is the block element and which is the inline element. An inline element will not occupy the entire width of the page. Not only that, if I click here and if I observe the box model, there will not be any margin and the bottom. If I click on the H1, you would see that there is some margin on top and bottom. But with inline, you do not have margin on top or at bottom. Let's take another example. Instead of this H1, I'm going to make this as a division. And here instead of paragraph, I'm going to make this as a span. Now div is a block element and span is inline element. The same thing will happen with div and span as well. I'll go to the browser now and we'll check the output. I'll refresh the screen. Now you see that the span and anchor they appear on the same line. So in case of div and span, the same thing happens. The difference between div and span is div is a block element whereas span is inline. So now you get some idea about the behavior of block and inline element. I will just repeat the difference between block and inline element. A block level element always begins on new line. Let's practically check this also. I will just go to the coding and I'll put an h1 here which is the block element. If I copy and paste this h1 and also copy and paste the anchor. Anchor is in line and I save this. Let's go to the output and I'll refresh the screen. If you observe both the h1s are coming on new lines because they are block elements. Whereas anchor is not a block element. Input is also not a block element. It is an inline element. Button is an inline element. So all these elements when you put, they do not automatically come on the new line. So this is the first point when you compare block and inline element. The second point is a block level element always has top and bottom margin, whereas inline element does not have. Now you observe this, that here if I click on the H1, we do have the top and the bottom margin. But if you click on the anchor, we do not have top and the bottom margin. And a block level element will take full width unless you control it by force. Whereas inline will have only the content size width. Now you see that when I roll over the mouse, this is the full width. Whereas in case of anchor, it will just select the width of the content. So these are the differences we have between block and inline element. Here are few block and inline tags by default. Why am I saying by default? Because you have something through which you can change this behavior as well. But let me just list out few of the block and inline HTML elements. In fact, block and inline are the display property of an element. It means you can change the block element into inline or an inline into block element using the CSS display property. It means you can make 
div an inline element and span as a block element using display property which is our next topic in the next topic we will dive deep into display property with various possibilities